When you look at this economic juggernaut that is Linda McMahon's campaign and the amount of financial firepower that they bring, if you look at post-convention before the, before the primary, let's just say there's three months, and you're saying, well, I don't got the firepower to fight for three months. But if we really turn the heat up, I can fight for three weeks. And, and we can do something here. Um, was this like a master plan or honest to goodness? Cross your heart, hope to die. Were you an Eagle Scout? No. You just had that Eagle Scout image. <laughs> I thought maybe you were. But um, honest to goodness, can you tell us that, that this was really a legitimate, you know, just going to the different events and people saying, hey, I want you, that, that now here in the, uh, in the eighth inning, the bottom of the eighth, you're throwing your hat back in the ring, so to speak. Although you'll say it wasn't. A, was this a master plan, or, or did this really? Just come, I'd, I'd come like. To you I'd like morning? to think that I'm not smart. <clears throat> I'm not sure that I'm not smart. Mm -hmm. uh, different people have alleged different things, uh, but I can tell you that uh, the weekend after the convention, uh, my wife and I sat in the living room of her house with my son and my daughter, and I I read to them a statement that I had written. And that statement, essentially, with the exception of a few words, is the statement that I uh, delivered to the media the following Tuesday uh, and posted on my web page. Uh, I am proud to be a Republican. Now, you don't hear that a lot in Connecticut, <laughs> but I'm proud to be a Republican. And I've, I have worked in the trenches for the Republican Party in this state for many years. I've been a Republican fighting for Republican values when we didn't have a chance. And that's, I believe in the Republican principles of freedom, free enterprise, personal responsibility, conservation of our natural resources, promotion of, of economic freedom and power through free enterprise. All of these values are my values. But I also felt disappointed, disappointed that for all of the work that I've done and for the races I've won, I was the only candidate that ever won a race in Connecticut, that my party wanted a fresh face, a new face. Okay, well, <laughs> I suppose I could go down to the plastic surgeon and have a little work done, but that's not my style. So I accepted that because I heard a lot of people tell me that. She has the money and she's a fresh face. Peter Schiff has money, he's a fresh face. Fine. I'm this is the year of the outsider. This is the year of the outsider. You know, all your experience and might be working against you. Might be, it's so fine. Throw the I, bombs out. I will do what I love to do, which is go around and help my fellow Republicans, and I've done it for years. Uh, I will let my staff go because there's no point in dragging them through a difficult period of time. You can't, when you don't have the party, nom the, the party nomination for the convention, it's harder to raise money. So we'll just curtail and let people go and do our thing and see what happens. Well, what happened? You pointed it out in the polls. Nothing happened. Two months went by. All we got was some more flyers in the mail. The numbers didn't change. 